And you said a few other things that really blew my mind out of the water. Bent frames and water inside the cab that they just cover up. Is that right? Well, yes. Yeah. Um, but if it's something that is going to be an issue down the road, but the customer is not going to notice it when they buy the truck, it's usually a set. Now, you also said something that, I, I mean, I guess that was very confusing to me. What, what is this about water inside the cabs that they just cover up? Yes, yes. Um, we've brought this issue up for years now, and it's, it's getting us nowhere. Um, the roofs in these plants, for how much money they produce, they're really not all that waterproof. And when it does rain hard enough for a good couple of days, it starts pouring in. Well, that's getting inside these trucks and all over everything, really. But when they do have a cab, I've seen it, I think 11, 12 times in a day. Cab will come down the line with probably a quarter inch of water in it. And then not farther down, they just throw the carpet, seats, electronics, everything right on top of that. They don't dry the truck out? No. They don't drive the truck out. Right in the water. So the carpet just soaks up the water and send it on down the line? Yes, correct. Holy crap. Oh, they have no problem doing that. As long as it goes out and the customer's not going to notice it on the sales lot, that's what I'm fine. saying is, this whole video started because you messaged me and said, I build GMCs and there's a reason why I drive Ford. Is that right? Yes, correct. But you work for GMC that you haven't seen inside the Chevy or anything like that, right? I've seen, yeah, inside both GMC and Chevy. They're on the same line. They're on the same line? Yes, they are. I mean, they're built on the same line at different times of the week or what? Oh, no. They could go Chevy, 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 GMC, Chevy, Chevy, GMC, GMC on the line. So this problem is both Chevy and GMC. Well, they're trying to throw these trucks out the door as fast as they can go just to make their money. Yes. So I was in the process of looking at buying a brand new truck when I got a very eye-opening message that stopped me dead in my tracks from one of the guys that actually builds GM, GMC trucks. And what you're about to hear, he's got to remain anonymous because not only would he get fired for what he's about to disclose, but he would get sued on top of it. Hi, Jim, how's it going? Good, how about you? How are you doing? Pretty good, thank you. Good. So, I'm not going to say your name. I understand you could get sued over the, what we're about to disclose. Yeah, because it is in our contract that we can't, there's no photography to go on inside these walls and there's this and that, can't talk about it. The purpose of this is not to say, hey, don't buy this brand. It's just to say, that for the price for these trucks, it, you could expect a lot better quality. Of First yeah. off, what's going on, I mean, inside the factory, you're not allowed to what what's the policy that you have uh there's no photography of anything there's really no posting anything on social media about your opinion on what's going on in there they really just want to keep a lot of people quiet about some stuff i guess but so what do you do there so you work for gmc is that right uh i work for yeah general motors we are in a truck plant that produces the heavy duty sierra and silverado okay both chevy and gmc okay and I am I do work on the line and I move around quite a bit in that factory. Okay, and we don't need to say which plant you're in because I mean that would I mean when these the, the GMC guys hear this, we don't want them to be able to kinda figure out who you are. So I mean we do need to be pretty careful that you can keep your job because this is how you make your living. How long have you worked there? Uh, I've worked there for four years. What are some of the things you've seen? You messaged me when you knew that I was in the, the market for a new pick, pickup truck, and your message yeah. stopped me dead in my tracks. Well, because I know you're using this truck for work. You're going to be putting a plow on here and putting a seltzer on it. One of the main reasons I didn't message you is because what I have seen going in on inside of there is scratches and bare metal. Well, and that means salt in which condition that's not always good. For parts to sit or for a body panel to line up right, this is where customers don't see it. Where I've seen it inside the wall there is taking file and making stuff bigger so it does fit. But they're not painting back over that. It's being left as bare metal, open for corrosion, open for rusting right off the right when they roll out there as a factory. So as the parts are getting welded together, if they don't fit quite right, you, your guys' job is to go in, file them down so that they fit together, but then they're not reapplying, isn't it like a zinc coating or something over the top of that? They do have an anti-rust coating before it goes into the paint shop. Yep. But they do have people from the body shop that can come down and 
if they don't want to scrap that part, they're going to make it fit. So yes, they will file stuff down and leave bare metal on the inside, these body panels and some pieces. And that is concerning for because a lot of these heavy duties are going to go as plow trucks. And you said a few other things that really blew my mind out of the water. Bent frames and water inside the cab that they just cover up. Is that right? Well, yes. There's some, because the robots aren't always perfect. Nothing can always be perfectly aligned when it goes into the robot, but it only knows that one motion. And when they are putting on stuff, I've seen it a couple times at the back of the frame is stuff gets bent and you cannot get a certain part to move in or out of there. And well, of course, after the time, you do pick up tricks on how to do it and work around it. But yeah, so they just kind of send that truck right down the line. I've not seen any corrective or anything to fix that problem. By the rear of the frame at the, where the box is, uh, they, are, they have had issues of parts being bent back there. Yes, that has to do with body mounts or on the frame itself. So how do they fix that? I mean, if they got two parts that aren't fitting together, what are they doing? What's the corrective techniques they're using? Uh, when it comes to those bent parts, it's not making it not fit. It's it's really pulling all the coating and any protection off the frame, and it's still bending those parts. But I've just seen them just throw the bolts in there and send it down the line because it's not something the customer is going to get under the truck and notice, or it's not going to be noticeable from looking at the uh, outside of the vehicle. So what this guy is saying is that if you can't see the problem, they're not fixing the problem. They're bending parts, they're scraping off the protective paint, and they're still putting it together. Now, I don't know how true this actually is, but I've seen enough comments from guys saying they're having similar problems to some of the things that this guy is saying, and you guys tell me in the comments down below. If you run a Chevy or a GMC, are you noticing any issues where we could ha you could be having rust and corrosion where you probably shouldn't have rust and corrosion comments down below are these minor issues i mean are these actual structural issues i mean are these big things or little things because i mean i could see where i mean that if it ain't broke don't fix it is that's that's an ethical question but i mean are they actually producing trucks that could potentially have structural issues later on for rotting out at the back due to rust yes that could follow five, ten years down the line if you're putting this thing in harsh conditions because it is, everything is stripped right off that frame when that happens. To it, something falling off or coming apart, no, but it doesn't make it fit right. Okay, so they're they're putting them together and slapping them slapping them together and sending them on down is a little bit what it sounds like. But if it's a bigger point or a bigger issue, then do they pull them off the line and, and send them back in, or if what do they? If it's a structure issue where it could be a safety hazard, then yes, it'll be pulled off the line. But if it's something that is going to be an issue down the road, but the customer is not going to notice it when they buy the truck, it's usually a set. Oh, okay. Now you also said something that. I, I mean, I guess that was very confusing to me. What What is this about water inside the cabs that they just cover up? Yes, yes. Um, we've brought this issue up for years now, and it's, it's getting us nowhere. The roofs in these plants, for how much money they produce, they're really not all that waterproof. And when it does rain hard enough for a good couple of days, it starts pouring in. Well, that's getting inside these trucks and all over everything, really. When they do have a cab, I've seen it, I think, 11, 12 times in a day, once uh, earlier this year, the cab will come down the line with probably a quarter inch of water in it. And then not farther down, they just throw the carpet, seats, electronics, everything right on top of that. They don't dry the truck out? No, they don't dry the truck out. Because I had a job where <laughs> it was quite frustrating, where you had to get inside of that cab well, when there was water in it. And they told me, well, grab a piece of cardboard, put it down so you don't get wet. What? Yes. And then, and then just put the electronics right into the water? They put the carpet right over it and they put, because some of the features for the power seats in that bolt right to the floor of the truck. Yeah. It's thrown right on top of that. Right in the water. So the carpet just soaks up the water and send it on down the line? Yes, correct. Holy crap. All right, so if you guys are watching this video, the next step that you guys need to do is share your stories. Are you guys experiencing some of the things that we're hearing about today? Some of these things that may be popping up from years back or maybe you bought a truck and something seemed a little bit off. 
What are you guys experiencing? So as you're watching this video, start putting your stories down below because this is gonna be huge. It'll let people know that are watching it. It'll let people know that if we're validating these points or if we need to build upon them or if we're gonna debunk them and none of this is actually true. I wanna hear from you guys, what's your history with the GMCs? How are they treating their employees though? Because if they're just throwing, if they're telling you guys just throw carpet down into the, or throw cardboard down into it and crawl into the cab, I mean, are they treating the guys at the factory right at least? If you've been there for 30 years, 20, even 10, around that, yes. Okay. What they do is they bring in, they call them temporary hires. Yeah. Um, some of them have been there for three or four years. They don't have, they really treat them like they don't have any rights in that plant. Um, this is another big issue I want to bring up here is because a lot of them are scared that if they can't do that job perfectly or do everything the company wants, they're gonna be out the door with that job. Well, this is where some of them get scared and don't wanna bring up if something went wrong on their job, and they're just gonna to try to cover it up so nobody notices it, so they can't get in trouble. So there's, they've got temporary hires that have been on for three or four years, which basically, yeah. to paint the picture for people watching the video, means that the company can let them go in a heartbeat, am I right? Yes, anytime. If they don't like them or if they just feel like letting someone go that day. So zero job security, which also means if that guy screws up or that girl screws up in any way, shape, or form, they're basically out the door at that point. Uh, it's not any way, shape, or form. If it's a repeat thing, okay. if it's once or twice, it's okay. Nobody's going to blink an eye on that. But if it's a repeat thing, then they are going to start saying, well, why aren't you doing your job right? So, well, if it doesn't have anything to do with them doing their job right, and they can't fix that, they're not going to bring it up because they think they're going to get in trouble for it and sent out the door, which I have seen happen before. So they're not fostering an environment where they encourage people to point out things and ways to improve the production of the vehicle they're actually creating an environment that keeps people from bringing that information forward is that what i'm hearing right or not for anyone that's on full-time hire there they want people yes i do want people to bring through problems but it's just that it's an environment where a lot of people that are only there temporary on these jobs are not doing because they're scared to bring it up to uh supervisors and that's where we can run into some big problems of if you're putting a part and something happened behind that and they just throw it right over top and send it on down, hoping nobody's going to notice. That's where I can see a big problem happening. You had a few points that you wanted to bring up. Is was there anything else that you wanted to to bring to the light? Um, actually, one thing uh, when they leave the plant because they get brought in the big holding lots out behind the factories. Yeah. Well, when you when you go buy your truck from the dealership, they tell you, "Hey, be careful on this thing for X amount of miles to break it in." <laughs> I've seen these things run wide open throttle straight out of the factory. These, some of them don't even slow down for corners when they're bringing them up back. They're really not taking care of these vehicles when they do. So you drive a Ford? Pardon? You drive a Ford? The, uh, this whole no, video. I don't drive the, them out. No, I have seen it though. Um, no, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm saying is this whole video started because you messaged me and said, I build GMCs and there's a reason why I drive Ford. Is that right? Yes, correct. Because uh, you're paying big bucks for these trucks and that. Uh, and it's just, I don't see this big dollar quality being put into these in level of care. Well, you're seeing it's a lot. Practically just to throw these out the door as fast as they can go. These are really expensive trucks, and you'd expect a quality for that price point. Well, they're trying to throw these trucks out the door as fast as they can go just to make their money. And, they're, and they have no qualms about covering up minor imperfections that could potentially become bigger problems down the road. Oh, they have no problem doing that. As long as it goes out and the customer's not gonna notice it on the sales lot, that's fine. And that's coming from a person that works inside the factory on the different, all the different processes that put this truck together over the last four years. Yes, correct. What are some of the different processes that you've worked on in the truck during the manufacturing process? I've been straight from when the, well, straight from where the truck goes from sheet metal being molded into the stuff to where it rolled off the final line. I've seen everything, pretty much. All right, that's changed my mind. I want Another thing I would like to bring up too is, I'm only speaking on behalf of the plant I work at. I can't speak for any other manufacturers or any other extensions of this company. I don't know if it's worse or better over there. 
but this is just what I've seen in this factory I work at. So when you say over there, what are you actually referring to? Uh, just the factory itself that I work inside of the building itself. Okay, I mean, you work for GMC that you haven't seen inside the Chevy or anything like that, right? Uh, I've seen, yeah, inside both GMC and Chevy, they're on the same line. They're on the same line? Yes, they are. So the Chevy and GMC are, I mean, they're built on the same line at different times of the week or what? Oh, no, they could go Chevy, 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 GMC, Chevy, Chevy, GMC, GMC, on the line. So this problem is both Chevy and GMC? Yes. <sighs> I had no clue. I Yes, uh, there's no different factories for them. They're cut the same trucks with a different bumper on They're the same trucks with what? With, like, a different bumper and hood on them. That's practically really the only difference of these trucks. Made in the, the interiors. Made in the same factory, same line. Oh, wow, okay. Yes. All right. <sighs> okay. I'm I'm kind of I I'm, I'm just uh, I'm I'm a little bit wordless at this point. I mean, I I don't know what to say. I had no clue that this process happened. I mean, yeah, so I've got that before. <laughs> bringing stuff up. <sighs> All right. I don't know where to take this. I, I'm just I'm dumbfounded. This is all great information. All right, well, thank you. Thank you for coming forward. Thank you for risking, no um, thank you for risking your job. Other people who do work in different factories and different manufacturers to please yeah, send them a message, bring this up, voice is heard. Voice is heard, right. So yeah, if you guys work in one of the different manufacturers, maybe you work in a Chevy or a GMC manufacturing plant and you can reaffirm what he's saying, awesome. Comments down below. Maybe you work in Ford, Nissan, Toyota. What is it like inside those plants? Because this is stuff, guys, that I would have never thought. I would have never guessed that they would be going to the lowest common denominator on a lot of these little minutiae things that you would think you're paying for quality and they're cutting corners. Well, at the end of the day, their game is profit. They don't want to put any penny more into that truck than they have to roll it up the door. It's not customer. All right. Well, thank you for your time today. You guys watching, your stories next in the comments down below. God bless you guys. Go get them.